Welcome to my very first video. God help us all. I'm stepping out of the shadows after three years, but if anyone has advice, definitely let me know. I feel like I'm at a stage where I don't know everything yet. I've had fish tanks since I was probably 11 years old, but haven't we all? This fish tank is actually my youngest tank. It's hitting with a lot of nutrients. I got a little bit of algae. I've got some tiger endlers in here. They're doing great. They look great. Windalo Java Fern. This tank is actually a refuge tank. I felt like these plants were suffering a little bit from guppy grass being extremely aggressive, sucking up all of the fertilizer out of the water. So uh hoping these guys will Thrive. Some fish you don't know are your favorite until they come through your door, and this was totally that fish. I, I didn't know how much I liked these until I saw them in person. Got a little clump of moss right there. Not sure if that's Taiwan or Peacock. Now I've been trying to make some kind of rhyme or reason up here. We've got frog bit, red root floaters, and duckweed. And the red roots seem to be falling behind. But you know, I don't think it's only that. They seem to be melting regardless. I'm gonna get a skimmer in a few days and start sipping some of this duckweed out. See if that gives way for any of the red roots. Now this tank was already a refuge tank. It was a tank meant to keep the plants away from guppy grass. And really I think duckweed is my next culprit. All of these plants below are low light and hopefully the frog bit will be able to take over the light blocking duties. Prolific spawners, these fish. Orange really shrimp in here, working hard. Eventually, they're going to get to all of the algae on the side of the glass. Right now, there's only six little astronauts. They're going to start the colony. And they've been existing peacefully in here with the uh, endlers. They seem quite a bit more shy than my other colors. I swear, different colonies develop different cultures. They eat different, they they gather around the tank differently. One of my tanks here, all of the shrimp gather and have a seance for food. We have the El Tigre Endler. Did you like that? El Tigre. Kind of looks like they have candy corn on their tail. A little... Not candy corn, but the original corn with different color kernels. I'm trying to learn my pronunciation, but this tank has these plants. You can pause it here. Is this peacock moss or Taiwan moss? I bought both. Guppy grass choked out large portions of my moss. I think one breed survived. And I'm not sure what I'm looking at. My very first experiment was really just having guppy grass everywhere. It was great at sucking up nitrates. It was very easy to grow. But ever since it started, Choking out other plants, I want to run out my front door screaming, clutching handfuls of guppy grass. I don't know what this plant is. These endlers came from eBay and they came a little wonky and I could see something on that female tail. I've got a little glass bottom tank set aside with Syropro. Green Jade, they come in and half of them are blue. That was a, another gift that I got from eBay. Take it from me, it's a mixed bag on eBay for sure. These were the brightest green shrimp on the pictures inside the eBay listing, and I was fooled. So I called the blue ones out, and some of the ones that went clear at least look green still. You can still see green, so I'm like, okay, keep them in there. The babies, these are babies that have already came out successful. My only one of my new shrimp that have spawned so far. It's taken a month and 10 days. Not as quick as the endlers. And it's so strange. They do have different cultures and it's not my imagination. These green guys are so much more bold than the, uh, the orange reallys. And I'm not sure if it's a number game and they came in with a few more or green neocardinia with attitude. This is a 20 gallon tall that's meant just for mystery snails and Japanese trapdoor snails. The ram's horn, the bladder snails, they found a way. I did not invite them to the party, but they came anyways. 
So again, with the, the half sand, half gravel, I just fed them. So they're all just chilling in big lumps. Trying to keep the pH above 7.5. Probably should take this wood out. Thought they'd like to nosh on it. Got an eggshell. Japanese trapdoor snail, mystery snails. Just white and blues for now. The crystal wart up here. Kind of terrible because I put it up here as mystery snail food and they eat it to where it becomes this texture that resembles maybe beard hair trimmings floating on the top of water. And then when you stick your hand in there, your arm hair gets to collect all of those proverbial beard trimmings slash plant material. It's a Japanese trapdoor buried himself. You know, there's already uh, little spawnlings of Japanese trapdoor. If you look very closely, it's like a shape. They're all the same size. There we go. I just went off to the right a little bit. Same size as everyone else, but you gotta look for that spiral shale. Shale. Look for the shale, Clarence. And we also have the uh, yellow shrimp colony just started. There's six yellow guys in here. Neocardinia. I'll have to do a video specifically about this later, but these are red dragon Dumbo guppies being bred with purple mosaic guppies. So you can see the reds are, are the males and the females are purple. When these guys came, the purple dragon started having crooked backs almost immediately. So I've been trying to breed them out with the assorted guppies and, and the red dragons just to not put anything at waste and just to see what happens really. Uh, this is a gravelless tank. It started off as a quarantine tank and then just kind of grew. They do live in this tank with uh, blue jelly neocardinia. Not sure if you can quite see, but they have a translucent shell and then their uh, intestines, their insides are like a lime green. They're, uh, they have really interesting kind of behavior, specifically these blue jellies. They're extremely hungry all the time. And when they eat, they all swarm and descend on like the same piece of food. And uh, for some reason, these guys are just a lot more concentrated. Uh, in this tank, we also have a female red dragon. Rad dragon! And they were kept in here with purple males. Got another... Another little blue jelly. 50,000 snails used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Here's another 10 gallon. This one has all purple mosaic females. Um, there's one female in here and she just has this vivid purple hue to her. Everyone kind of has this yellow silver look to them, but she is a grape. So I don't know what I'm going to do something special. Uh, put her off in a tank by herself and pick out a, a special male and see if anything comes with that. We have a lot of blue dream in here. Um, this one's another one loaded with guppy grass. I have the top moving pretty quickly on this one. So duckweed gets broken up, any floating plants get broken up and uh, a lot of light gets down to this guppy grass. It does seem like when I'm taking duckweed out, it gets cloudy, but uh, that's a win. This is where the blue dreams chill. This tank is a five gallon, and I'm just kind of holding my purple mosaic males off to the side. I had a red cherry shrimp colony in here, and somehow a blue dream got in there. And with just that one blue dream, this tank has produced more browns than any other tank, even tanks where I mix all the colors together. And there's a uh, purple red dragon hybrid. All right, this is a uh, 10 gallon. We've got pearl weed and we've got pilo moss in here. And it's the moment we've been waiting for. These are actually the red dragons and purple mosaics. These are their offspring and they're quite a bit more healthy than their parents were. Some of the uh, crooked backs you used to see instantly disappeared. They do seem to lean purple or they lean red and some of them uh, go right up the middle and, and they look very golden or yellow. It's kind of like a silvery void of all color. And this purple kind of shows that. He's got a 
a silvery tint. Um, you could tell by the shape that they're hybrids, though, and first generation, these genes aren't set. Within this tank, we've also got Blue Dreams. This is one of my first tanks, so at one point, there was a lot of overfeeding involved, and that meant that there was a lot of snails involved. And uh, eventually, when I cut back the feeding, the snails kind of cut back, so that is why you see all of the snail husks. They make wonderful decorations. I've got those little lead bars to help hold down the plant so the roots could start making its way into the gravel. There's a cuddle bone in there. No, not for an underwater parrot. It is for the shrimp and snails, and they're, they're kind of lukewarm on it. This tank is a lot happier without having to be roommates with guppy grass. It's a lot happier every time I scoop out wads of duckweed. Um, so I'm hoping to de eventually develop tanks that just show off one or two plant types. For now, at least in a 10 gallon. Black bar endlers, I think, might be my, my favorite fish um, so far. Uh, when I saw them, I knew I wanted them. And then when they came to the mail, I knew this was my fish. And then as they started breeding and they're super healthy and versatile, I was pleasantly pleased to see that they really do expand out to any healthy water column that I can keep. There's literally no snafus in the spawning process and they seem to be moderately peaceful. Don't do a lot of fry chasing. We also have red cherry shrimp in here. Big old clump of, clump of guppy grass. I do plan on taking some of this grass out. Actually, all of it out. Just leave the wood in, and I'm just going to put some samples in here. Just some samples of plant. W one type of plant, something else than guppy grass. I've been really thrown off by these cherry shrimp. Some of them come clear. And then when I cull them out, they seem to grow up and fill out. This particular one, I would like to cull right away. Go ahead and put it in the 20 gallon with all the mixed colors. But other ones, I feel like I've gathered in groups of dozens and I've put them in the coal tank. And then their shell, as they got larger, filled out and was no longer red. So right now I'm testing that theory. I'm not culling this one. And I'm going to see if, in fact, is it possible to have a large red clear shrimp? Or do they all get their, their red coat later, like this one? This is also my main tank for Malaysian snails. And really my favorite small snails, personality-wise and looks-wise. Tiny little unicorn horn. So these are the trials and tribulations of the first Black Inler colony. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, this is my very first tank coming back to the fish room. And then these are also the very first fish that I saw at a fish store. We've got some red cherry shrimp in here. They are roommates with the gold Mickey Mouse platies. There's a tank busting Amazon sword in here. We've got the little Amano shrimp. They're little, but they're big enough where they're not allowed to touch me. Peaceful shrimp. They don't really bother anyone. They don't bother cherry shrimp. There's five of them in here. It's This one is loaded with eggs. Since this isn't brackish water, I think she eventually lets the eggs go and all of the platies eat the eggs. So I would like to start a brackish water tank. I uh, haven't done it yet. And these Mickey Mouse platies were so sick. I was just starting fish tanks. I didn't realize big box stores regularly give out diseased fish. And these guys came home with me with an infection. I lost almost all of them. I think three out of five I lost. Going through a few medicine cycles, they came back with a vengeance can't keep those numbers down the cherry shrimp i put in here and i thought i lost for good and then they just reappeared months later with with a whole bunch of reinforcements there's a lot more in there 
than you than you can tell from the get go. Got a, a rock in here. Probably my only tank with a rock. Rocks are expensive. Leave in the comments below where I can get a rock. Outside, maybe. We got our big ol' Amano shrimp. This is the king Amano. Is this a male or a female? I know the cherry shrimp, the directions of the tail can tell you. And if that's true with these guys, then that looks like a female. But, you know, these fish, they, they feel like they look at me like Klaus from American Dad. They, they know when you walk into a room. Okay, this is hospital tank with stack endlers. Stike endlers? Stack endlers? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I keep talking about eBay, but I, I made four orders at once, and then I had to deal with the consequences. And, uh guys came in shimmering and flashing really I feel like they almost didn't make it but I've got them sitting in this tank right now we've got salt we've got I believe they're sitting in Prasipro no it's Paragard right now and they seem to be doing well the females have stopped hiding from me the males are getting a little snippy and I'm thinking you know maybe maybe separating the two. I've had a few drops since I've put the uh, Paragard down and I've taken those fry off to the side. So I think I'm getting a foothold of my colony. This used to be a hospital tank and got it all cleaned up, but that's why there's a plastic piece and we've got a little, a little fry in there. A little stack fry looking at me. Hello, Endler. This is a, another black endler colony with a red cherry shrimp. Got no gravel at the bottom, loaded with guppy grass. And we've got the air pump circulating pretty fast because I'm battling duckweed. And when I'm battling duckweed, the, the, the tank get, does get a little cloudy. These guys are sparkling and healthy though just like every other black endler colony that I'm running. They just, uh, a real hearty fish. Can't say enough good things about them. This one is a 20 gallon long. I, uh, have assorted guppies in here. You can also see the orange shrimp hiding in the clump of guppy grass. The guppy grass does not like this tank for some reason. And it's not the bubbles. The bubbles, I'm just taking out the duckweed. Maybe the guppy grass needs more light. But I've been putting, you know, extra potassium, making sure that we have liquid fertilizer in here, and this guppy grass is absolutely having a fit. Inside this is sort of guppy colony. Of course, a lot of endler influence. I think that guy's a 24 karat gold back there. Lost the female. So I just let that one loose. We have strange orange color in some of these guppies it's it's very odd it almost looks like it shouldn't be there but yeah I've, I've, I've never seen orange guppies until now kind of with that that tent we have some half black blue influence going on you can see some of the black bar endlers in there spreading their influence You know, I was thinking maybe this big piece of wood was jacking up the pH and it was making it unlivable for this guppy grass, but you know, I've checked the pH over and over and it's within the range that guppy grass should exist. It's a very versatile plant. I've never been able to not get guppy grass to grow except this tank. I think there's a ghost in here. A guppy grass killing ghost. All right, this is my 20 gallon high assorted guppy tank. I have different genes in this one, but I have black bar endlers in here as well. We've got half black blue genes and Japan blue genes. And when they mix together, there's the endler that's right next to the, the black bar endler. That's what they look like with those three different strains in there. I, I love seeing the, the colors. 
um, that come through. I recently did quite a few orders with these guys, so I took out all the prettiest ones and sent those first. But, you know, we still have some lookers in here. Rock in the gravel. Every color of shrimp has been culled in here, so we get a lot of different designs, like the Rillies. We have the tiny little Corys in here. I find with the shrimp, the more colors that you put into the coal mix, the more variations and, and, and random colors that you're going to get. If you put different colors in there, I feel like it kind of cuts down on the brown shrimp as we scan across this bottom. And if you could stop on any shrimp, you would probably see that none of them are brown. That's an interesting caveat I found, which is the, the amount of shrimp and what type of shrimp you put in there determines how many shrimp are going to revert back to that wild brown slash clear coat that, that is naturally occurring. When I move down to this one, it is just reds and blue dreams that get put in this one. Red cherries and blue dreams, and uh, it does produce a lot of browns. This tank is actually my first accidental hybrid tank where someone sent me half black blues and Japan blues in the same package. And it created a happy little accident where these hybrids are very healthy. They're very peaceful, uh, disease resistant, and uh, they just keep on breeding. The real kicker is they just sell like the Dickens. It's like hotcakes. You explain what happened and you put it in the description and uh, everyone buys it just like a pure strain. This is my obligatory quarantine tank that eventually gets better. For all of my assorted guppies, I also keep the deformed ones in here. These are when they're really sick and I think they're gonna go. I've got plastic plants in here crushed coral at the bottom it's got a standard filter going gives them something to look at without the diseases soaking into the plant this tank has been going well for so long eventually all the diseases disappear and i'm just kind of left with the deformities you see some tails here you know mostly deformities make sure i cull them from the main group well, that's all i've got for now until next time, fish keepers. Until next time.